this is, this is, this is. You look beautiful, my man. How you doing? Thank you. You, dude. You always look great, Mike. You're like a, you're like a fine wine. Just, uh, you know, just never age, man. If I can look as half as good as you, and I'm your age, then I'll be, I'll be doing something right. It must be the so, filters. It must be the the permanent filter. Yeah. Yeah, the permanent filter for sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on the show, man. I, uh, you know, we're still living in bizarro world. And yeah. You know, you've we're, been, we're, we're still here doing it. I wanted to talk to you because, well, one, we're friends. It's been a while. You've been on the show a bunch of times, but a billion times. But uh, you've been all over the place. You've been you you yeah. moved, you moved in. You were in L.A. You moved to Nashville. You're from Salt Lake. So at, at one point, you were back in Salt Lake for some lockdown. So yeah. what was it like? And, and what was so? Compare all the places that you stayed. It, it, did I miss any cities? No. So I mean, I've been I've been the only those. So this year I've only been to those three. So uh, let's do a Nashville, comparison. <laughs> okay, so basically the red states, COVID doesn't seem to exist, and then in the blue states they do. The COVID does exist. So, it does. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so weird, man. So it is like, weird. And, and, yeah, it's, and it's almost as if you go outside because I also have a place yeah. in Texas. Sure. When I'm, when I'm in Texas, you go outside, you wouldn't know that covid was a thing right is that what you're kind of saying about nashville and and salt lake both yeah i mean i've i've been vaccinated since march now so i've been kind of having you know um somewhat of a i guess you could say as normal as it could be life a renaissance uh, yes (laughs) you know as normal as it could be for right now but um yeah nashville there's there's not like i think everywhere is kind of the same it's just that every business kind of operates just a little bit differently. Like everybody take, everybody makes their own rules about how life should be right now. So I was in Salt Lake though, because, uh, my band was, was shooting all this TV stuff remotely. And it was one of the only places that we could, uh, film during COVID. I guess like LA was completely locked down at one Mm. point. Like they wouldn't let anybody, you know, come do this stuff. So my band was on, uh, Kimmel this year. We were on the Ellen show. Uh, we did the CBS uh, morning show. Yeah, we, we show. I, I was definitely going to ask you about all that. We, we should yeah. definitely get into that. Oh, for sure. But I mean, what, what makes it different is that we had to provide the footage and we had to film everything remotely. So there, there's pros and cons to that. Like the do you, pros do is you that pay for that. Do you pay for that too? Oh, yeah. Big so, time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's a big. Yeah. So it's kind of like it has to be a certain production quality. Yeah, but, some, I mean, I'll tell you this. Someone pays for it. <laughs> someone pays for it. <laughs> someone does. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because it's like if you want if you want people to watch the stuff and you want you know to operate as normally as you can, you gotta you gotta do you gotta do something. You know, yeah. to, be on, to be on these shows because they're like all these shows are trying to still operate as if everything's fine, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I didn't get the experience of going to Kimmel or to Ellen, but I got the experience of being on the air at that time slot at that time and but yeah. the, the pro of that is you know the pro is that we got to control the footage and control the audio the con is that i didn't get to meet ellen or kimmel and experience the whole going to the late night and getting like the goodie bags and hanging out backstage or whatever it is you, you do on those things because i still have never properly have done you know a late night thing yes. you know i mean i've been on i've been on late night now but i've never never gone to the the physical locations so uh yeah it was it was still kind of nerve-wracking because i'm thinking like okay people are going to be watching this so i gotta i gotta play but what was also cool is that we could record it as many times as we wanted to to make it to make it good right so yeah so that that was a whole thing um and then what was great too is that you know my my band's two-piece so can we pause for one second yes sir and and just (laughs) let everybody know your band i don't know how but they found me and that's right a lot of people just call it IDK, IDK how yeah yeah yep. IDK Correct, how. Yeah. yeah so yeah, it, uh, by the way your your Wikipedia your Wikipedia page is it's beautiful it says uh, IDK how is an American musical duo based in Salt Lake City Utah which is correct formed in mm-hmm. 2016 the band consists of lead vocalist and bassist Dallin Weeks and uh-huh. drummer Ryan Seaman whoa That's me. you're you're on the internet man. That's uh, me, man. Before signing with Fearless, the duo was described as, this is what I found very entertaining, the hottest unsigned band in the world on the cover of Rock Sound in March 2018. So how do they measure hotness, for one? <laughs> well, you gotta, be ex- you gotta be extremely sexy. Yes. You know, so we got that nailed, apparently. 
No, I'm just kidding. The I, hair I think looks what makes, good. Oh, thanks, man. I actually just got cut uh, a couple days ago. I've been going to the same guy for uh, 16 years now. Beautiful, beautiful. But it's the first time I've gone to him in a year and a half because because of COVID, and he moved and he comes back to, you know, California once a month. Um, yeah, hottest unsigned band in the world. I think it's because we were we were catching, um, we were catching the internet by surprise so quickly. It just yeah. kind of happened out of thin air, honestly. I mean, we, we created an Instagram page. We kind of created this uh, this fantasy world for our fans to uh, follow along if they wanted to. And what I mean by that is that there's a, there's a whole script. You know, we're, we're a band out of time. Um, you don't really know, you know, how if we're time travelers or if we're, you know, if you're just finding these these tapes that are uh, undiscovered about that, us. That yeah. That's what was so cool about your, you kind of like, you guys told this funny not funny uh, a story you know well, yeah, kind of based fine. around it's your funny. based yeah. around your name which is from well, back to the future for anybody that right. didn't catch the the yeah. the quote there um when doc sees the libyans the libyans yep in the twin pines uh parking lot in yeah. The twin pines mall. yeah um what i was gonna say well i mean why why it's kind of funny to your point is because uh you know we started playing shows at the uh the end of 2016 and we were just denying our existence for, mm. for about a, for about a year almost, you know, and it was, it so was people, kind of a thing where, yeah. People would ask online and you would be like, what? No. Yeah. I mean, I mean, those, those guys could be anybody, you know, <laughs> those, those, those two sexy men over there, those, those can be any number of people. But um, yeah, no, we, we had a lot of fun with it. Cause you know, at the time we were just, uh, we were currently employed and we wanted to, you know, separate ourselves from any kind of, uh, we, we didn't want to be disingenuous to the, the jobs that we, we, we had. Right. You know? So, um, so we weren't, it could be really easy to just, you know, say like guy from this band or guy from this band or whatever, but I'm um, just like wave a flag around. But I think there's something to be said, you know, where the music, uh, speaks for itself. Cause I've seen guys that have gone on from their other band, you know, from other bands that mm -hmm. are like really successful and they try to start over and, you know, the art, uh, speaks for itself, you know, so yeah. either people like will give a shit or they want. And I think it, the same thing is with our, with our band. It's like, you know, I think it, 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 um, it, it certainly, you know, helps us like, you know, gain the attention of the people that, um, we're following our past projects, but it also could hurt us as well because, you know, they might have preconceived notions of what, um, this, this thing is about. So we didn't want to like tie in any of our, you know, our, our history, I guess we just wanted to start up from the ground of just like any other band would. You know, yeah. um, so we were playing like our first, our first proper show was like, uh, emo night LA and it's, it's cool. I mean, we're not, we're not like, an, we're not an emo band, but I think, um, a lot of, a lot of those people that listen to that kind of music, uh, identify us as a band that they like, you know, in, in their world. So, I mean, so we got, we got an opportunity to play that as our first show. And then we started playing, uh, dive bars around LA, like 21 and up stuff. And we, you know, we, it was really hard to get like an all ages show. Cause you know, we had no history of playing anywhere or anything. Nobody knew who we were. And we were playing under this incredibly long band name. And then it just kind of, it just kind of stuck. So, uh, we just kept going with it and that was it. And I, I got, so like, yeah, Dallin and I, um, that's my singer. So Dallin and I, uh, we met a long time ago and I was in this band with him called the Brobex. And so we ended up just keeping in touch over the years and he would just call me up to come play drums on, you know, solo things that he'd write, you know, uh, he'd have me come play on demos. And then we just kind of, you know, kept, kept it going and he decided he wanted me to be a part of, you know, the thing. And, and so now it's, you know, it's labeled as a, as a two piece band. And I, and I think we did that out of necessity, uh, in the beginning, just because, you know, we're, we're cheap bastards. So, um, you know, yeah. so it's like, I, what, what I was gonna say is what was really cool about doing the late night stuff is we actually had like a budget to, um, you know, for, for that stuff to add, like, you know, background singers and, and an extra guitar player to like, bring this more to life. But um, yeah, I wanted to ask was, was the decision obviously to be just a duo purely financial because it's just easier or is, well, was it like also it's easier? Yeah. It's easier to have like less cooks in the kitchen. Yeah. And when we were employed again, it started off as like a fun side project, but you know, it's like we would, we would both be on these like really crazy schedule. So, um, you know, it was, it was more necessity of like, could we just go play a show like whenever we want to? And, you know, like the more people there are involved, it's the harder it kind of gets to, you know, make everything come to life. So, um, all those yeah, barriers so sort of worked as, uh, yeah. I don't know, like as positives for you guys. As, right. Yeah. yeah Colin, exactly. it, we've, it always, we've always been friends, man. It's just, he's, That's cool. he's such a creative, uh, force and I've, I've always loved working with him. Like he's just, he's so talented and, 
and kooky and <laughs> all the all the cool things. Yeah, you know? and so the music, I mean, the music was that something that um, obviously Dallin's a, a, an incredible songwriter, and right. it's very, um, and it's it's all these things kind of put together right like it's not one type of music right it's it's, yeah. it's modern pop it's 80s synthy it's it's circusy you know like it's yeah, got sure. you know it's got theatrical. some of that stuff yeah theatrical that's a that's a great way to you know it's very theatrical it's like you could be watching a movie to a, right. lot, of the, a lot of the stuff you guys do so um where did where did you guys develop that sound and what you know how did that i mean I mean, dude, he's, he's just, he's just an incredible writer. Yeah. I, I wish I could just get in his brain on, on things, but, um, I think it all comes down to originality. You know, you, you try, you try to take some things from the past and, and make it, make it even current, you know, but I, mm -hmm. I always see, this is what's really crazy about music is that you see somebody like, a, um, I'm just thinking of modern people, but you think of like, you know, like a Billie Eilish or like a, a Post Malone. It's like, they're, they're completely own thing. And I think that's what generates success is that you can find something and just make it your own. You know, you see like for one Billie Eilish, there's probably 20 people that are trying to do the exact same thing she is. And I, I don't think that's how you become successful. I think it's, it's you try to create your own sound and that's what can catch people's attention. You know, be, being your own thing, everything from like how the, the presentation looks to how the songs are. And, you know, and I, I've always said that if, if it's really good, people, people will catch on and they'll hear it. You know, we, li we live right now in the wild, wild west of everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if it's good, if it's good enough, people, people will be talking about it. That's what I truly think. There's, there's no way people aren't, cause everybody's like kind of connected right now on the internet. Yeah. Um, if, if it deserves to be heard, it will. That's what I've always thought, you know, especially now, you know? Yeah. Make but, it your own. That's great advice. And, and, yeah. and I think it's working for you guys. Cause you definitely have your own sound. It doesn't sound like anybody else. It's it's you, but uh, where do you go from here? You have a new song out, right? Uh, yeah, um, it's called the, the song out right now is called uh, "New Invention." New so Invention, you, okay. Yeah, so so check that out. It's, it's it's everywhere. It's all it's all on Spotify. I mean, what's really crazy is our our record came out uh, in October, and we started working on this stuff in February, like recording and everything, mm -hmm. and we got done, dude. We got done right when the the pandemic started. <laughs> And so we were just like, ah, it's like, I swear to God, man, my band is like the luckiest, unluckiest band in, in the world. Like we were just, we were going, 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 and then up oh, COVID. Cool. Yeah. You know, so but of course. That's right. everybody though. I mean, right. you know, sure. <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't just us. It's a worldwide, it's a yeah. worldwide problem. So what but, do you, what do you do then? Like, did you, of course it takes you maybe time to yeah, react we, but did you did you pivot what what was the main thing you guys did because of covid uh that you maybe wouldn't have done if not for well the lockdowns we, well we definitely recorded you know a live li live versions of our songs at this place called june audio oh, i'm wearing the shirt it's funny i didn't, re I didn't realize oh, nice. it's all coming on here but yeah uh recorded a place in utah called june audio and we got to collaborate with other uh live musicians we had like a horn section so we got to record live and then you know stream that through uh this platform called radio.com that a lot of people got to watch and because i just wonder what could have happened because like the song went number one twice the song called leave me alone mm -hmm. and i just couldn't believe how fast it all happened we were the band that knocked all time low off their uh you know 17 week streak of their song monsters and that and that song's still like in the top 10 which is crazy you know it's been out for like over a year and they're still just they're still just riding that wave. And I just, you know, I'm friends with their I'm friends with their manager and he and I talk sometimes. And he used to be my manager like 10 years ago. Um yeah, so That's it's just insane. it's just it's, yeah, yeah. So we were just talking. We we were joking around though. I remember I <laughs> I got like the clip, it was like on Billboard. It said like we were number one and all time low is number two. And I just sent that to Nano and I just wrote, suck it. <laughs> 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 it was really it was funny as hell though that's but, the um, best what, no, chart, no, what chart was that it was it was the alternative alternative one. yeah cool so we we technically got on there twice excellent and then it's and it's funny in radio it's kind of like a water slide you know like you go up and up and up and as soon as you reach that it's it's usually a really fast downfall so now we're not on now we're not on the charts but we were for like 20 weeks with the song leave me alone but we yeah we reached number one and that was really crazy and I'm still just learning about all this radio stuff. But dude, when I when I was a kid, I thought, you know, when you so I grew up in Utah, right? Sure. I thought maybe listening to like X ninety six or something, that was like the radio station there. I thought if I was hearing like Green Day or something, 
have a song on the radio, I thought maybe everybody that was listening to the station at the same time around like everywhere was listening to the same thing I was at that point. But I, I didn't realize until I was much older that radio is regional. Mm-hmm. It is. It's, it's just, it's just regional. It's, it's crazy. I mean, when you're a little kid, dude, you're yeah. just like, oh, oh, you know, so well, I thought uh, it was like the Casey Kasem, like it's the same thing everywhere. Right. Right? Yes. That's what you yes. thought. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You know, no one's telling me, no one's telling me anything. You just, you learn all this shit for yourself. But I was going to say that, um, yeah, we had really, it started off in like Utah and then it kind of just made its way up to everywhere else. And it, it, again, it's very it's, traditional. It seems like it was a traditional growth as opposed to, oh, we got on TikTok, which is like the new thing now. Like a lot of pop songs or R&B songs and hip hop songs get huge on TikTok. Yeah, it's, it's you know, and what's weird is there's some radio stations out there that um, that do that format now where they're like, oh, this is big on TikTok. Let's put it. Are you start playing it? <laughs> It's gone opposite where, yeah, you, you go to the internet to find the trends, find what people are yeah. really listening to and, and play that. That's the problem is like with media, you know, media hypes certain things, certain acts and certain types of music. Sure. And they don't really pay attention to a, a whole other type of music, you know. And so right. how are normal people to know what other punk rock kids are listening to? You know, you got to find different things, you know, the internet. Always sure. the internet. This podcast, yeah, I mean, RB, a lot of people find yeah. music from this, like my guests on this podcast. In fact, I find right. music from my guests in this podcast. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I, I didn't know, know this was so good. All right. <laughs> yeah. I've been finding things. So g- going to your point too. Oh my gosh. I already forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah. So like our band started off on, um, on Instagram, you know? Yeah. And like, I've had bands start off on MySpace. You know I mean? That's, that's right. originally how I got my career. It, it used to be because start MySpace and then you go from there right. and now it's, you start an Instagram and you go from there. Right. And, and it's Facebook kind of amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I just think it's kind of amazing that, you know, with, with music, I, I've also learned that I don't decide when, you know, uh, something is done or not anymore. It's, it's, it's they who decide the people, you know, they decide when I stop playing music, they decide when, um, they don't care anymore. You know, so it's, it's really the fans that perpetuate everything, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a really crazy concept because I'm, I'm always thinking like, dude, I've, I've been literally doing this now, like professionally since, I mean, I met you back in 2002, but I've been chasing this thing for forever. And I've been in all sorts of bands, whereas like a lot of my friends have only been in like one band or the same band, but like my career is just kind of like, you know, it's gone like this. Yes. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a graph. It's a chart. And we've talked about your, your past bands on the podcast before. So yeah. find those old episodes, everybody. But, uh, it, it's, it's a Brazil. What's up, Brazil? What's up, Brazil? <laughs> yeah, I need to get back. I need to get back down there. I heard not, not to give anything away. Um, you know, COVID's really bad down there. Okay. But, yeah. um, you know, there, there, there was a chance that we were going to go down there. There really was. So maybe, it'll happen maybe. again. It'll happen. Yeah, maybe we'll see. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is, you we're know, in the roaring twenties for sure. In another year or two, everything's going to be normal, but it's right. going to be the first couple shows and the first couple festivals are going to be weird. And oh, we're playing our next show, our first show back in a, in a year and a half um, in Utah. We're headlining a uh, a festival out there called Fork Fest. In a year and a half, that's 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 some time. I mean, it takes people uh-huh. time to like get over and i think on both sides to be honest to get over their yeah. whatever it is they're obsessed over and it could be health and safety it could be yeah. you know, the opposite but um whatever it is everybody needs time and so right. i think a year and a half from now that's that's a lot of time i mean i, I would say that's yeah, no, better yeah. than you know a lot of the festivals that are happening this september sure yeah so my so my band's playing a, a festival in june oh you're playing in- this june it's June. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so this will be my first show in a year and a half. Oh, so show, I thought you were yes. saying your first show is going to be in a year and a half. No, from no, now. no. I'm oh my saying. god. <laughs> All right. So the, the, not yeah. not as much time to prepare. Mm. So you're going to get just like the people that don't care. Those people are going to come to the show. I mean, look, I'm fully vaccinated in Utah. What I heard in Utah now is that like you don't have to wear a mask at all. You know. Okay. Good. So. All right. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, I mean, we'll see again, 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 red states. Everything's COVID, happening COVID fine COVID in Florida and, and Texas, as far <laughs> as I know. I mean, I haven't heard of anybody like that. I know that's like, yeah, it's going crazy down here. Like, nothing's happening right now. Yeah. 
I'm sure yeah. somebody's like, look at the numbers. I'm not looking at the numbers. I'm not looking at the numbers either, man. <laughs> it's really, it's, God, it's, it's so, like a feeling, right? Like, <laughs> I feel it's so shitty what, what is happening in this world. And I feel so bad yeah. for all the people that have, have contracted this. I mean, dude, yes, I, I might have had it. I, I don't know. I, 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 I think I, I did. Vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. But we're okay. And you know what I was going to say too? If you've even done a thing like Warp Tour, you know, you're probably going to be okay with the, you know, like, I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about, but like, it's, uh, you know, if, if you've done, if you've done the warp tour and you've like, you know, taken a piss in the porta potties yeah. in the morning or, you know, just gone around town and been on a bus and all this crap, like you're probably going to survive it. I, you know, some people might not, you know, I know people now that are, dude, I know people now that are still getting it. An old merch guy of ours got it. Yeah. yeah people like, still get it. Just, yeah. Fuck, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just blown away. It's no joke. I mean, I know yeah. A few, uh, quite a few people that have had it and they're like, you don't want to get it, you know, and I almost feel just as bad getting the second shot of the, you know, vaccine, you know, like that kind of thing. Like that's what they're telling me. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I had it too, back way back in right when the lockdown started. I think, know. I think I got mine in December. I think I had a day where I had like a little bit of chills. Yeah, and then after that, it just like <laughs> well, you know, I took an antibody this test. Is, after, this, yeah, you yeah. did. I didn't take any tests, but the reason why I think so is my wife had fever for literally like all the COVID things for a month, and then I had it for one day, Fe- right. fever, chills, all that, and it felt like a flu. It just felt like a flu, and yeah, uh, and then I was fine. But uh, who knows? It could have just been the regular flu. Everybody says, yeah, whatever. But. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess during all this time, I've been just like, I've learned some new skills. Like I learned how to record myself on drums now, like with, uh, with logic, I bought like a mic pack, I'm sending like files to like friends and I've been sending stuff to Dallin. What did you, what did you, you know, start out with? What did you, material. what did you start out with? Was it a laptop? Was it a, what kind of computer yeah, what kind of interface? Uh, yeah. This, this computer I have right now. <laughs> so okay. I start on here. I have like an external drive that I store everything on. Um, I'm using Logic X, Logic Pro. Using that, I got like a sure mic package. I'm using an eight channel uh, Focusrite. I have I have seven channels, you know, with like mics. I have like a couple overhead mics for people that don't know what I'm talking about. It's just these two mics that go over the cymbals. And then I use, I know, I keep forgetting this is going to be broadcast like my face. So I'm like, I can show people visually. So like, you know, there, there's, a, there's a snare mic and a rack tom mic and a floor tom and a kick drum mic. And... Yeah, that's so I've been I've been doing that and then I've been going into logic and like messing with like, you know, they call it, you know, EQing, equalizing. What are you um, what you are know. you using for preamps or for uh, D to A conversion? Um, I don't know what any or of that is. Or A to D conversion, I'm I guess just, it would be. I, I'm using I'm just using the the set um What are your the, mics plugged What are your mics plugged into? <laughs> just, just the focus right. That's it. Just oh, the it's focus a focus right. right. Yeah, it's a focus right 8 channel you know, um, okay. box yep, that yep. goes in my computer. That USB. goes in your computer. Cool. Yeah. And then I end up like using the stock, you know, presets on logic and I've been able to get some like good, good sounds out of it. I mean, it's just, it's just for like demo quality stuff, but someone could take my files and they could um, them, do yeah. what they call sound replace. Yeah. They could mix it. They could sound replace it if they wanted to. So all the files are there. Um, but yeah, Excellent. so I've, I've been learning how to do that. I've been recording my own demo singing on them and stuff like, I'll have to send you some stuff later on. You can tell me what you think about it. But um, I've just been doing that just to, to pass time, just seeing if I could, you know, write songs on my own again. I've always liked to be, I've always liked to be in like a collaborative setting though, because I had this like, you know, fantasy as a kid where it's like you get in a band and you just write music with your friends, you yeah, know. Yeah. But then like the older you get, your friends have responsibilities and jobs and goals and stuff. So um, that are separate from. Yeah, what were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to just say, like, I can't believe you learned how to record this. Great. How About how much do you think the the, the package that you bought with the focus right, the microphones? Oh, it was like 1200 bucks. Really? So you can get going for under 2000 bucks. What about the computer? Yeah. Plus, you need a, comp- a decent computer. Yeah, but. I've already had a computer. I mean, I bought this refurbished maybe, like, for, like, 800 900 You using you a, an Apple, a Mac? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. You, I, I feel Pro. like Mac is still, yeah, Mac is still the leading technology for music but if you're trying to get in the live stream world microsoft is is the thing i've learned really you know if you're getting into like twitch oh, and all that stuff, I, okay i don't know if you've done that i i'm not a gamer i know lots of people are making a career <laughs> i'm a gamer that. at heart but i don't actually play often right. and i don't go online <laughs> Dude, I guarantee, mike i guarantee you if you started i mean maybe me too but like if you started a 
if you started a Twitch channel of just you fucking playing video games, people would pay you to watch that. I'm dead serious. It's so dumb, but crazy. it's true. It's crazy. Yeah. People, dude, there are, there are musicians that I know that arguably are more successful as gamers than they actually are as musicians. That's crazy. If I, if I loved playing video games more than music, I probably would do that. And that, I, that's, that's how I feel too. I just, I don't care. I love music. I just want to play music. Yeah, same here. All the time. yeah so, I don't give a fuck about playing video games, man. Like, yeah, again, it's the same thing. If I want to do that, I do that, but I just, I, do I don't have the time and I don't have the energy to, you know, I, I think the last like entertainment thing I owned was like a, um, it was like a Sega or something, you know, okay. I, I, haven't, I haven't played an Xbox or like PlayStation or anything. I just never, cause like, dude, I spent all my time like just with, with music. I borrowed a PS4 to play Tony Hawk and it's great. I love okay. it, but I play for a little bit and then I'm like, okay, okay I got to get back to work. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, exactly. Never say never. I mean, maybe we'll have a Twitch by next year. You, you just never know. Twitch is the yeah, new, if, the new if podcast. This keeps, <laughs> if this keeps going. Yeah. A hundred percent. I think shows are, dude, I think shows are coming back. Like we announced, you know, Reading and Leeds. We're not like, we're supposed <laughs> to play like main stage on that. <laughs> of course. Of, of course, shows are coming back, but it's it's a different world now, and 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 I don't think live streams are going away. I don't think uh, I don't think <clears throat> Twitch is going away or anything like that. Podcasts are as popular as ever. Um, I, I think it's a new world, and and there's going to have to be room for for both and more because we've got uh, we've got you know VR happening, yeah. and I'm sure that's probably happening more than i even realize i'm not paying attention to it to the space right. we have yet to do like one of those live stream things but i i, I don't want to give like anything away but if we were to there's definitely been talks of doing one but if we do do one we want to do it in a way where it's, it's not a traditional mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. here we are we're just gonna get up and play we want to make it like a whole thing that's all you want to make so. it like this is worth watching and i right. don't have to be i can be on my couch and i want to watch this that's almost very like smart. A, yeah, almost like a uh, almost like a TV show. Yes, so that's, that's, what what, I've been. that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll see if it, if it comes to life or not. Everything's about budgets, and everything's about you know if, if it's if it's worth the the almighty dollar. You know. Yeah. Don't put something. Don't put something out like that. That's that's like going to make people go. This should have just been a free YouTube video. You know what I mean? You have to make it something sure. that they're like, Oh my God. Hey, it, work, it works for some bands, man. You know, I mean, it just depends on like what you're, what you're going for. You know, like some bands under deliver you're, you're correct. Right. But yeah. I, I feel like you're a band. Your band is, is the type that over delivers. You try to anyway. And, and that's what I want to keep doing. <laughs> keep that rolling because so many people are lazy. So many people are doing the bare minimum and they don't even realize it half the time. They don't realize it. They just feel like, oh, it's good enough. But, but it's like, man, that's what sets you apart. That's why you had the number one song. You know what I mean? That's why you're the hottest, un what, we're the hottest unsigned band. Well, no, I, just, I, think they call, I think they call us that because like, dude, we didn't have a, okay, look, we didn't have a record deal. Yep. We were like already drawing like, a lot of people, I think we had just signed a record deal as we were going to England. We were, we confirmed festivals and all this crazy shit. Like we had a booking agent before we had, um, before we had a record deal, Yeah, you know? So, I mean, like, I, I don't know how that happened. And Usually the booking agent is like the last thing you get, but like, right, right. for whatever reason, I mean, it also, it also depends on, you know, who's, who's back in the band. I just remember like when this whole thing was getting started, I was just kind of casually passing around like a, um, a flash page of like demos to people. And I'm so used to the Hollywood thing where you give your demo to somebody and then maybe they never, they never hit you back about it or they take like weeks to get, get back to you. But like for whatever reason, this time I showed like a few people and within like hours they were like, Hey, let's take a meeting. Let's do this. And I'm like, Holy shit. Like I've never, I, I've never had this happen before. Let's take a meeting. You know? <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually it's like you, you pass music to people and you know, you have conflicting opinions like, Oh, this is good, or no, this isn't. I would fix this. I would do that. But like, dude, I'm telling you, across the board, ten out of ten, it was like, wow, you guys got something. And I've never experienced anything like that before, like with with any band I've ever been a part of. So, um, yeah, wow, so that's man. yeah, it's it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. I'm just I'm saying like respected, like you know, music people. How do you pass? How do you to. how do you uh, deal with the fame and the notoriety and the the just adoration from fans? Well, my mom thinks I'm famous, so that's all that really counts. But uh, how do I? How do I? Do, you know, that's 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 what I do. I do it for the mom. 
You know, even my parents, you know, as long as they think I'm like famous and, you know, I'm, you know, doing my dream and that's what, that's all I can really hope for. I know. I was like, wow, Ryan. You, yeah. You I know, know it sounds like um, a joke, but like, seriously though, yeah. I mean, like how, I mean, how do you, cause I've known you a long time. Yeah. Maybe it's because it's me, but, but <laughs> you're the same dude. Like you're the same good guy always. And so how, my, you know, I've, I've taken a, I've taken a different turn in my life in the last year. We can talk about that off the air, <laughs> but, um, but what I was going to, what I was going to tell you though, is that like, um, I'm at a point in my life where I just, I'm, I'm completely like selfless. I'm completely, um, what am I trying to say? I don't have expectations ever. I posted a thing on my um, Facebook yesterday. I saw this like spray painting thing on the sidewalk. It said, fuck your expectations. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, things, life is going to happen how life is going to happen. You know, I can't determine what's going to happen tomorrow, but what I could, what I can do for myself is I, I control the thing. I can control the things I can control, you know? And what I mean by that is dealing with the fame. It's like, I feel like, okay. So when I had blue hair and like things were happening and tours were going on and stuff, like I couldn't go, I couldn't go to like Disneyland or the movies or, you know, places where people hang out and, you know, and, and someone like, I sort of got, I'd be like going with like, you know, my girlfriend at the time to like Disneyland and like, I, there, I'd be like tagged in something. I didn't like, it's like you take my photos in the distance. So people are always watching you. Yeah. You know, really. It's a strange it's like, feeling, I right? feel like that. Yeah. The camera's like the, almost it's like nowadays, it's like camera kind of the enemy. It's like, wh mm -hmm. what happened to like the, the rock star? What happened to like the mystique? Now everything's on the internet. Literally. Mm -hmm. Like you can go somewhere and someone will know that you're there. All takes is someone out their phone and they just film you and you're like at a, like a live event or something and like people around you will know what you're doing constantly. Unless I just yeah. stayed in my house and never posted on the internet. Yeah. So I was going to say when my, when my hair was blue, it was a lot crazier. But um, if, I, if I go to shows, it happens all the time. But, um, but if I'm going, you know, if I'm just doing everyday stuff, it's fine. I mean, I live in Los Angeles too. So maybe if I was like, you know, like, a, like an emo night or yeah. I was at like a, a punk rock show or uh, who knows. You know, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's my, my life doesn't really change that much, you know? Yeah. Um, good. That's all. Isn't it kind of weird yeah. though? Like when you? it's better when, what when they, when they just say I'm, hi I'm, yeah. rather than like not say anything. Cause there's so many times when they won't say anything and then you just know that they know who you are, but they don't say anything. Right. And you yeah. feel super yeah, that, weird. That <laughs> happens when they, they, they don't know who you are and you're like, I know, you know, who I, you know, and then you it, pretend it, you yeah. don't see them. <laughs> you just right. try to act normal, but you can't. <laughs> I'll t okay, I'll tell you a story real quick. So, <clears throat> okay, I, I'm not I'm not naming names, but there is this dude who was like watching my Instagram stories for like ever, and he had a blue check mark. And I I didn't fucking know who this dude was, but he was like this kind of like I don't know. Sound, I'm gonna call him SoundCloud punk rocker. He's okay. not like there's a new generation. You know, they got like, they got the fucking hair, and they're kind of wearing like you know baggy shit or whatever. And so I went to, I went to said guys, you know, he had like a little release party and like, there's like a bunch of people, you know, that I knew who he knew or whatever. And I finally, I just went up to him. I didn't introduce myself and I, I pretended that I didn't really know who he was, but I did. And he pretended he didn't really know who I was. And so it was really crazy. And then we ended up just like following each other. And now we have each other's numbers. And I was like, Hey, if you ever need drums on a track, hit me up. And he's like, Oh, that'd be so sick, man. You know? And then it was, it was a whole thing. So um, but yeah, so Whoa. we, I experienced that like yeah. sometimes in California. Um, That's but yeah, I, I, yeah, it is a trip, but I, I would, I would almost ask you the same thing too. Cause I feel like anybody that's in my age range would, could look at you and be like, okay, that's fucking Mike Herrera. Like anybody would know, like you see like Tim Armstrong walking down the street. Oh, that's Tim. You know? I mean, you get like in my eyes, you guys are fucking, you guys are rock stars, man. You know, <laughs> so, like, but it's, 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 it's weird. Like, cause I've known you for so long. So yeah. it's, like, if I ask a question like that, you think inside your head, like the hell is he talking about? You know? But then like you ask me that and I'm like, the fuck's this guy talking about? <laughs> you know? You know what but, trips me out is to think how long that you and, and people like me have been in the public eye in a, in some way, like, you know, putting yeah. something out there publicly, being in newspapers, being on TV right. programs and, and, you know, obviously you're albums. A, you're a Super Bowl commercial, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I wish we would, we never had a video for that song, which I was ah. just talking about the other day. And I was like, man, we should have used that footage 
for the video. That would have been amazing. We could still do that. <laughs> yeah, like fireworks and shit, and people dancing, uh, the whole thing. God, you guys look so sick. It was fun. But at, th- at that point, when I saw you guys in that Super Bowl commercial, I was like, "There's no coming back. These guys are going to be unapproachable. I will, <laughs> I'll never, I will never get to meet my career. I'll never tell him that he inspired me to play bass and all this crazy shit." You know. So and that's got to be weird too, hearing people tell you like, "Hey, man." You inspired me to like get started as a musician and all this crazy stuff. Yeah, it was like for for bass because I'm a bass player too, and I think that's why da- Down and I uh, complement each other. But um, you're an excellent bass player, by the way. Uh, Probably see, that, better that, that, than me. Bullshit, bro! No <laughs> fucking way. In some yeah, ways, can I put that on my bio, like better, yeah, better. Probably, than my, just like, as long as it's probably. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like on my business card. It's like he, he's probably a better bass player than, than me, and then it says like, <laughs> "Dude, fuck no, man." But like for just just full disclosure, I mean, like my ba- my top five bass players have been like it was like you, you know, Mike Durant, uh, Matt Freeman. Oh yeah, was was another one. Um, I love Matt. You know, Matt, Matt. Matt Sharp. You know, from like Weezer and the Rentals, he was mm-hmm. he's another fucking powerhouse player, and and I, and I dare to say my one of my favorite guys. He's I, I've been in the band with him twice already, but uh, Ron Picaro. I don't know if you know him, but he plays for uh, Wolfgang Van Halen now. He no. was in um, he was in I Am Ghost with me. He was also in Falling in Reverse for a minute, and uh, he oh. and he plays like a great. And you know what's funny? He's I actually, might have met him. Yeah, he's he's yeah. the first dude I ever met on um, the Warp Tour in two thousand two. When I was with the Eyeliners, he was the first guy I ever met, and he was like on Warped with his band. They were called Third Estate, and he was playing this like grabber. And I just saw that dude like they're setting up their own stage every day and stuff. And I was just like, that dude is the fucking most amazing bass player I've ever seen in my life. And you know who would know that like five years after that, he and I would like be in multiple projects together. Like he and I played. Um, we opened up for you with with. Uh, I, I was filling in for Mest. Oh yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. And Ron, and Ron was playing bass at that show and so like that was and then he and i both played with this actor named uh it was like a private party but we played with this actor thomas and nicholas as well i don't know if you know him but he was in um he was in that movie rookie of the year do you remember the the kid picture okay i do remember the movie yeah he, and he i can, was all, I can he picture was also the, like, the kid yeah and he was also like an american pie okay you know? he's all grown up now okay i can i, yeah, I know yeah. who he, what he looks like he was, okay. he was tara reed's boyfriend in the movie got you but but like I got to go record with that guy. I got to record like a cover album with him at Studio Six Hundred Six, which is Dave Grohl's uh, spot. And uh, you know he needed a bass player, and I, and he was like getting paid a bunch to do this like private party. And he was like, "You want to come do this with me, Ryan?" And I'm like, "Sure, I love weird things." Yeah, so of I, course. I, I did that with him, and I was like, "Ron, you want to come and you want to come and do this?" And so you know, yeah, I, I love Ron so much, man. And then back I, in Boston, I met Ron on the tour when you guys were in, up in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron's just fucking dude. I'm, yeah, so th- those are my top five. That's rad. Mm-hmm. I just had Carl Al- Alvarez on on this podcast. I heard, you know, I was flying from Nashville to, to here, and I heard, I heard most of the podcast, and he was really <laughs> great too, man. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's up there as well. I can't believe he can like play like that with his fingers. You know? I know it's insane. Wow. It's insane. I, I've been practicing a certain song for. Uh, we have an upcoming set on June fourth for MXPX, and. We're doing, you know, a bunch of deep tracks. Like, and okay. there's one song that has this bass line that I we never played it really in practice. It was always just like we recorded it, and I just yeah. went nuts. And uh, yeah. in retrospect, it's not crazy, but it's just never. It never stops the whole time, and it goes for like eight bars, and it just so it just keeps going. So if you miss one note, you're fucked. Like. Okay. Um, and so I've been practicing this bit and uh Were you doing it with your fingers or no? Not my fingers. No, I'm playing with a pick. But okay. uh but I think I got it. It's just a matter of like can I get it on the night of when we play it live? Can I do, you know. So I'm going to I'm going to continue. But it has to be like one of the, for me I just have to play it a bunch so that it's just yeah. I don't think about it as much. Second nature. Yeah. yeah. Because if it's anything my my mind will uh it'll take over and sabotage me. Right. Like if I'll, I'll have doubts. And so the only way I can not have those doubts and not fail is just practice. That's it. I'll tell you what, in my whole career, I've only botched something like three times live. Like actually, where it just like destroyed everything. <laughs> times, that's it. Three times in my whole life. I can count in all those times were in my life. Well, actually no, one of the times is in this band. Okay. But, um, yeah. Just botched like, Oh my God. So one time I was in Los Angeles one time it was in Maryland, not Los Angeles, sorry, San Diego, 
Maryland, and Scotland. Those are the three times I botched. What song? Uh, what song? Um, it was actually it was a song. It was a cover. Okay. IDK, it was, IDK <laughs> was doing it. Um, we were playing over at the Frankenstein's place. It was like a rock and horror picture show cover. Okay. All right. Yeah. I've definitely so, heard it, but I can't. Yeah. So we so we did like a whole rendition. We try to do like a cover every tour. Seems like um, now we're doing the song by Beck called Deborah which is like, it's usually an eight minute song, but now it's, uh, we, we cut it down. I was wondering about that song. Cause I heard that too. And I was like, Oh yeah. I didn't know no, it was a cover. Down, it's one of Down's favorite songs. And, uh, it, it sounds just like you guys, but yeah, but the lyrics are like <laughs> <"Kind what?"> kooky. <laughs> <laughs> a little kooky. Yeah. I was like, that's not normal for you, <laughs> but right. it, it makes he, so much sense. So everybody that's a cover. Go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess Beck got, Beck got wind that we were, um, we were, we were covering a song. We played a festival with him in, uh, in Atlanta called Shaky Knees. Mm-hmm. And then we, we also, um, our, our auxiliary guitar player, who um, he, he's, he's, he worked his way up, I guess. He, he was teching for us. Uh, his name's Anthony Papura. He's great. But his, his, uh, the American his, fia- yeah, yep. his fiance <laughs> um, cuts Beck's hair. Okay. So he got to find out about the, he got to find out about the cover, you know, so. Does, it's pretty pretty bizarre. But, what kind know. of what kind of haircuts is Beck getting these days? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Very, I haven't looked at his Instagram in a long time. I mean, I have friends that are friends with him, but you Shaggy know, again? Um, yeah, that's a dude. That's another guy that doesn't age. It's like you and him are drinking the same the same shit, man. I don't know. So I got to get your secrets, Mike. Like, what, what are you putting on your face at night? What are you Beck? I guess just like yeah. I got to I got to eat more burritos. <laughs> I got to yeah, eating burritos and drinking Silver <laughs> City. Yeah. So yeah, um, God, I'm just mm. yeah. It's just it's been an amazing adventure. Um, yeah, Did, spending time in Utah. Utah was kind of you know a little little weird as well. California yeah. was the most weird. I just had to get out of here. Like in December, I was like, I'm gone. Nothing. Not, you couldn't even go hiking. Have you ever outside. been yelled at yet for not wearing a mask outside? Oh, dude, I yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, That's like a rite of passage. Beach. Yeah, and I I also like I, yeah I got yelled at on the internet. Um, Okay. Nobody, nobody, nobody's perfect. Why know? did they yell at you? Do you want to talk about it? Wearing, sure. I don't fuck, you, like you weren't wearing a mask on the internet. Like it's the internet. So here's what happened. <laughs> I went to. I was completely outside. One of, one of my friends, her name's Kaylee. She's in a band called Rivals. And I remember uh, Kaylee she, Rivals. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, Kay, yeah. Kaylee. Yeah. She's she, she's made, dude. She's making like all sorts of artwork for bands, and she's great. She's awesome. awesome. She she made some shirts for me. Um. So. She, she wanted to have a birthday party and she's like, man, I've always wanted to go to this place called white limousine. And I was like, Oh, I know a guy that works there. Maybe I can get us like a table. And because of COVID, it's like, you have to make a reservation, like, you know, a month out if you're trying to have like a large party. Mm-hmm. So I just made a call and they're like, Oh yeah, we can get you in there. So we had to sit outside. It was, it was colder than hell. you know. <laughs> super cold. And uh, yeah. I remember I reposted like a thing from her and we were outside, like in a circle, right and outside. Everybody's vaccinated, you know, we're all, we're all eating and kids are like, fuck you. You're not wearing a mask. Like how inconsiderate, like the hell are you doing? Like we're in a pandemic. And I was like, guys, I'm vaccinated. I'm doing, and they're like, Oh, thanks Ryan. Like you addressed everything. And it's like, you know, <laughs> and it's like, at some point, man, it's like, fine. If you don't want to fucking like me, dude, don't like me. I don't care. Like it's, yeah. it, I, I, can't, I can't please everybody. Yeah, and and it's not you. I mean, obviously you're a pretty thoughtful I don't person. Piss off our fan. I don't you're not piss trying. Off our fans. That's no, it. You're not like, not, purposefully yeah. but yeah people got to understand that you can't think of everything all the time and it, it drives you crazy to have to do that yeah it's either it's either like you're you're a fan of me or you're not a fan of me or whatever but like you're always gonna have haters man and it's just it took me a long time to just like realize that like no i can't control the universe like it, it's just you know whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen yeah you know you got, and you got a lot of karens should, out there you know right right and you just you <laughs> just yeah, I think I went off on a tangent on like because my Facebook is um, is personal, uh-huh. and you you commented something like you're like, hey man, just be yourself, fuck the rest, who cares? <laughs> like, just, and yes. I was like, all right, if Mike's telling me this, I I know I'm doing something right. I've known this guy for like almost twenty years now. Like, yeah, you know, it, it just makes you like second guess yourself sometimes, and it's like mm-hmm. I'm being judged by like, you know, people that you know don't pay their bills and they don't fucking like. You know, they're just, they're sitting at home still. It's like, yeah. I don't know, it, maybe it's, mm. it can't be a bad thing. I, I, sometimes I make things all about me and I need to not do that. Yeah. And, we, we don't know where these people are from, but we certainly, you know, just 
you know, <laughs> expect a little bit of like, Hey, chill out. Like, but that's yeah. not the internet. That's not the internet. So no. my advice is don't worry about it. <laughs> right. It's like, yeah. would these people even say anything to my face? Like, don't say it's something good you thing. wouldn't say to someone's face. Honestly, it's a good thing if you have people talking shit because it means they care about you a little bit. Well, they're, in a weird they're, ta- way. they're talking. Right. They're talking. They're talking. It, talking. It's just good for your, your career, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Any, At least they're talking. You're right. Yeah. I mean, we had like, you know, whatever. We don't really do anything that controversial, but like, Anytime anything does come up, it just gets people talking. So keep talking, everybody. You see that, you see that way Mike Carrera threw the bass across the stage? <laughs> he could have taken an eye out. Disrespectful you know? to bass. <laughs> yeah, disrespectful. How could you? You know? Yeah. Ernie Ball gives you these fucking basses and you just chuck them like they're nothing. Here's the thing is most, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I try not to really even think of, I think of my, my fans as perfect people that listen to our right. music and and I think of the haters as they're just like trying to get in on it. Like I, I don't even consider them as like fans. So right. when I think of my fans or I even hate saying that, but people that like to listen to MXPX and listen to this podcast or whatever it is, uh, they're perfect as far they're as I'm interested, concerned. Yes. Until, exactly. until they like, prove otherwise. Right. I, I, I would <laughs> like to think that all the people that listen to our music think – you know, similarly, you know, we've all made mistakes. We've all said dumb shit at, at one point in our life. I would think we're not, we're just human, you know, like yeah. we, we learn from our, I almost feel like I'm a, a composite of everyone. Like everyone that listens to my music, I'm a little bit of everything, but like nothing, you know, I'm my yeah. own person, of course. Of course. Um, and you don't get everything right. Like we, I wonder what's Ryan Seaman like when the camera's off, when the mic. When it's off, off, I just go like this. <laughs> you stare at this wait for like, something and I just wait for my batteries to plug you in yeah and you know I'm trying to like watch things I what I notice about myself during this this pandemic is that if I am not doing something constantly I freak the fuck out I don't know why it's just something I've learned about myself hmm. you know I'm so used to just being on the road and being on a schedule and a routine and that's what I, that's what that's why I took up a new skill like okay I'm gonna learn how to record myself I'm going to learn how to do my own podcast. Mm-hmm. So now I, I just real quick, a, a quick shameless plug. Yeah, I, have please. Own, I have my own podcast called Ryan Seaman and friends. It's on Adobe radio every Thursday. And Mike Herrera is going to be a guest June 24th, even though we recorded this, I think the day that uh, we played on Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was like, so, when's this coming out? He's like, I don't know. Eventually. <laughs> eventually yeah well and then, but no, it's, I, I, it's a retrospective it's a it's a yeah. little bit of a history of my career I don't, we don't go through maybe everything because it's just too long but <laughs> that would have taken five hours but no, uh, for sure but like yeah yeah because like the, the idea behind my show is that like i try to learn how everybody came up because i feel like all of us um whether you're like an artist or um a producer or a business owner or a fucking, I don't know, like a comedian or a TV show star, whatever. It, it's not just exclusive to music. I've just had a lot of music people on. Uh, but I feel like we all have the same path. It's just it's just how we get there is just a little differently. It's like there's a lot of sacrifices. I mean, dude, I remember I went to MTV two years ago, and they're like, how does it feel to be an overnight success? And I'm like, well, <laughs> it took me like 18 years to be an overnight success. And then they all just started busting out laughing. And I'm like, no, <laughs> seriously, guys, it took 18 years. And I say this on every program I'm ever on, but nine times out of 10, you know, I, I am like the living proof of this, but nine times out of 10 bands fail. And the one in 10 uh, that succeed were the ones that were too stupid to stop. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's it. So if you just never give up, I mean, there's people I know that like still haven't given up and they've been doing it ever since I've known them and they're not where they want to be yet, but they're further ahead than they were. Yeah. You know, that's so. literally my advice is like, that's how I am where I am is just never giving up. You just don't stop. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, stop. Be, be stubborn, but you know, yeah. you know, get, make sure there's progress happening. That's of, of course, man. So dude, Thursday, yeah. every Thursday, Yep, June twenty fourth is your episode, though. All I have right. it all, all, all catalog. I, I'm like some of my guests. I'm having on like uh, Luke from the Struts, having him on my show. Um, I have this drummer Luke Holland coming up. Um, tonight, or actually, well, this will already aired by Monday, but I, I've had the band with so I can look at my calendar to see who else is coming up on this thing. But uh, see who we got. Yeah, I got Luke Holland. I got Luke from the Struts. I got Ephraim from Death by Stereo coming up. 
I've got a uh, singer songwriter, this guy, Johnny Lucas out of uh, Nashville, who I've been writing songs with. Right on. Um, yeah, I've just, yeah, these are, these are just the ones I have coming up. I have uh, Frank Zumo coming up on the program. I have this guy, Chris Hornbrook, who plays for uh, Danny Harrison, George Harrison's son, playing drums, and he's in that band, Poison the Well. I just, I try to interview all sorts of people. Right on. You know? Is it in yeah. person or is it on, on, uh, on? Um, usually it's in person. But some of these people that I have on are, are remote. You know, I, yeah. I, I couldn't bring you down to L.A. and sit in the Adobe place. But if but if they live in L.A., um, I'll have them, like, in the studio. I have this other band that's coming on, too. Called, well, I don't even know if I should call them a band. But uh, they're called Satin Puppets, and I found them on the Internet. They're, they're these two kind of Tim Burton-y looking characters, these two girls and <laughs> twins. And they have this, like, theatrical uh, – it's almost like it's like a movie or something like they have like three songs on the internet and i just i'm like i love being early on stuff right and i, I think this thing's gonna blow up you know it's just a matter of when but sat, satin puppets satin puppets all right i'll check it out check it out yeah, yeah. right cool. on hmm. uh yeah and they got kind of like they got kind of like a following because of tiktok but um you know there's labels talking to them right now and i just kind of found them like you know through friends and i just was like you know what? i love being early i want to bring them on my show I, I like exposing people to new bands. Like I found this band called Bad Flower in 2014, just from being on like the internet, just from being on Absolute Punk, and then you know, then IDK and Bad Flower started doing shows together, like in LA, and did a little like West Coast run, and then both bands, boom, you know, out of out of thin air. But wow. uh, you were yeah, early. So I, I always like to be, I, yeah, I always like to be early on stuff, you know. Yeah, be early. Yeah. To be early is to be on time. To be on time and is to be late. If you're late, you're fucked. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Perfect. Well, Mike, I appreciate you bringing me on, man. I just, God, Absolutely. I can't believe that we're friends after all these years. They, they say never meet, they say never meet your uh, inspiration. <laughs> you know, never, never meet people that have inspired you. But uh, I'm really glad that you're, you're in my life, even even still, you know? It means a lot. And God, it's it's crazy. Dude, thank we're you all, so much. We're all just people at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you, can, go, you can go up to... Uh, you know, I mean, I, I saw, like, I know, like, okay, bad example. I almost did. I didn't, though. I saw Robin Williams on the street, like, in Vancouver. He was just, like, mm -hmm. eating a hot dog. That was, like, the wrong, that was, like, the wrong time to go up to him. Yeah. I didn't like, go up to him. But, like, you know, I feel meat. like you're approachable. I'm approachable, I think, you know? So. I love yeah, it. That's, that's where we're at. Dude, thank you so much. You're always the best. You're, you're such a nice so, guy. You're an amazing drummer. Um, I wish the best for you in the band. Uh, so what's coming up next? You, 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 we didn't even get back to talking about all the ins and outs of, uh, your experience, but we, we talked about the, you know, Kimmel and, and Alan, all that a little bit. So, oh um, yeah. In a nutshell experiences, um, figuring out day by day, everything changes. So right. um, we have shows coming up. Uh, we got a show again in Utah in June. That's confirmed. It's like a hundred percent happening. Okay. Um, and then, we, uh, yeah, I can say this, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, August, we are doing, you know, Reading and Leeds' main stage. And then we just announced, we're, we're about to announce a show uh, in September, I think, in, in Denver. So Right on. So it's, you're just, you're just main, mainly doing festivals, not touring. Right. Yep. yep. Smart. So See how it goes. And then, um, you know, if I have time, uh, I'm going to be, this is maybe something I can drop as well, but, uh, you know, if, if IDK is not doing anything, I'm going to be, you know, spending my time also playing drums with uh, this band called the Juliana Theory. And uh, oh, That's right. You're good buddies with them, huh? Yeah. They were, they were one of my favorite bands uh, in high school, and uh, they are going to do their 20th anniversary of this record called Emotion is Dead. <clears throat> and it's a great I get record. To, yeah. I get to play it. I, get, I got to learn it all. And, nice. Yeah. So... Well, Mike, thanks again for having me on. Um, Absolutely. It's frozen now. All I can see is your face drinking like a, like a water bottle or something. And it's all good. Oh, wait. Now you're back. Now okay. I'm back. <laughs> it's all good on my end. Uh, but cool. thank you so much, dude. Um, where can people find you and where can they find the band online? Uh, they can find me at Ryan Seaman, S-E-A-M-A-N, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, IDK How for everything else. Right on. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Even I think even like TikTok. I have a TikTok, but I don't ever use it. Uh, still learning. <laughs> slash, uh, slash lazy slash I'm almost forty. Um, what else? Yeah, uh, Facebook.com slash drummer Ryan Seaman because some asshole had Ryan Seaman. Um, yeah. So there you go. How dare he? How uh, dare you? <laughs> cool. All right, you're the best. I'll talk to you Here's soon. Mark.
All right, sounds good. Peace out.